Ryan, take it away. Hi, everybody. It's me, Ryan Iliopoulos, comic man. And I chose, as I do every year, my, uh, yeah, last, couple, last couple years, I, I chose five single fun issues of spooky comics from the Marvel Universe that are easy to read on Marvel Unlimited because that makes it easy on everyone. Um, and we're going to go in a particular order. And I didn't label these in the correct order, which is my fault. But I want to go in a particular order because I want to save the best for last, which is the Fantastic Four one. Um, let's start with Hulk versus Dracula. Hey, guys. I got it, Fear Itself, real quick. I got it. I, I did not plan this. I'm so sorry. Hey, guys, so during Fear Itself, a bunch of hammers drop down. Uh, Odin's evil brother, the serpent, wants to take over the world, wants to be Odin. So e seven evil hammers drop down, and a bunch of heroes and villains get them. They become super powerful uh, and become crazy. What happens when the Hulk goes against Dracula? Not a, not a question you get asked very often. And as I find more about this comic, I want to hear what you guys have to think. What to say about it? It was a, It's a first of three. This is a, a, a breezy read, but I still want to see what you guys thought. I liked the first few pages where they're going into where Hulk is tr is like traveling through the the vampire nation, and that mm -hmm. one vampire is like, I'm pretty sure he's um, a respectable young, a respectable chap, and he tells him like, look, you just go your way, it's gonna be fine, we're not gonna worry, and Hulk just hits his head clean off. Yep, I yep, thought yep. that was hilarious. I'm like, that's a good tone setter. I'm into yeah. this. I I enjoyed it. Um, it I, this one definitely it definitely is like. I chose this because it was brisky. Uh, yeah. I had the I had the page uh, here where it's when Rizo Coda shows up. Hell and yeah, Rizo like, Coda! And I sat there and I was like, "This is one of those times where you're reading a comic and everybody's like, literally, literally, Dracula son is there, like, whoa, what? Rizo Coda, the Rizo Coda, and I'm like, all right. I mean, like, you guys could do this all you want. I, I don't know who this is. I don't. I don't <laughs> like, I, hey, I don't expect anyone to know the the. Seventeenth, the seventeenth random Dracula son. Like, yeah. Uh, so it's it's just playing through that moment, and I'm like, yeah, okay, Rizo Code. Let me tell you why uh, I I like this book. I don't think it's particularly great. I think it, it is first also the first the first issue of just like a fun little miniseries. I like seeing political and like battle strategy Dracula because that's not a Dracula. That is you, fun. You don't get to see battle Dracula very often. Strategy Dracula. Uh, and I just think that's a, I think that's a good time. Uh, I. I made a choice after I'd finished reading to read the rest of issues of some of these. So mm -hmm. I've read all three of the Fear Itself Hulk versus Dracula issues. Oh yeah. I wish I'd picked a different one. I should have done Chris the picked, Man thing. That's why I picked one. Yeah. <laughs> I should have I should have read all three of Chris the Man thing. That's the one I really I, see, I pieces of. I, I really thought about it for for this week because we're up by night, but I, I wanted a variety of all yeah, of the universe. Yeah. 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 Uh yeah. The, the the Hulk versus Dracula story where it goes is like yeah, okay, cool. All right. Uh you're you're correct. Like watching Dracula be like a uh, pragmatic strategist is the best part of it. Um uh, I, by I, a mile. I really uh can we uh, I, I like really, Hulk's design. I love the final page. It's just cargo drops of monsters on top of Hulk. I think that's really cool. I it's Ryan Stegman on art. This is early Stegman. Uh so like I I I love Stegman's art. Um I just think it's I think it's just a, a fun um, um, it's, it's a shame that it doesn't get any better. Uh, but I, I will say, cool. I will say. Um, so one of Rizo Kodo's uh, guys is a vampire who like adapts himself into smoke. Mm -hmm. So he tries to get in on the Hulk like that, and uh, so the Hulk's you know swiping at him, and he's like, "You can't hit something that's uh, transistent." And so the Hulk breathes in very deep and disperses him with a gust of air from that's his mouth, right. which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, any any thoughts before we move on, Brandon? I didn't care for this. Cool. Okay. Next, move on to, hmm, hmm. Let's do Ghost Rider. Let's do part one of Rise of the Midnight Suns. Ghost Rider twenty eight. Uh, you. This is my favorite Ghost Rider run. Uh, this is the Danny Ketch run. But this Danny is Ketch, the yeah. this is the beginning of of the Midnight Suns. Everyone's, you know, Punisher and Moon Knight. Everyone's favorite Midnight Suns in this comic. Uh, that's a that's an internet joke. Sorry, y'all. Um, I love Ghost Rider. I think this is a really cool first issue. I think the art is stupid good, but I, I, I've always thought the art is good. There's one specific flash page of the, the Rise of the Midnight Sun that is just jaw-dropping. There's so many beautiful characters. It's such a beautiful splash page. Uh, I, I'm glad we read this. I, I talked about this first because you see the weapon of Danny, of, of, of Johnny Blaze, show up in another comic in the Thunderbolts issue, so that's fun. Uh, what did you guys think of, of, of the ghost, ghost and Blaze? Double combo. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a whole lot. I like 
I, what I really liked is how Ghost Rider is staying Ghost Rider because um, Danny Ketch suffered a, um, a fatal injury. And if he transforms into Danny, he's dead. But Danny's still dying inside of him. So he's like, well, I'm screwed either way. You have that um, complication going, and then you see Danny as a spirit go to the light, which I assume he's trying to ascend to heaven. But oh, instead, oh, he's so good. Yeah, that's on the splash page. And then, but it's then, of course, he sees Lilith in the Midnight Suns. He's like, oh, shit, we're screwed. Um, I like Johnny Blaze's shotgun. That's really cool. The old man mm-hmm. on the other motorcycle. The caretaker, um, I, Sam Elliott. The caretaker, yeah, Sam. I really enjoyed this issue. I had a good time with this one. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, I really like the art. Um, just like you said, I think the art. For for Ghost Rider, especially like I've, I've seen a lot of these before, um, this time period of Ghost Rider art is just exceptional. My one of my favorite uh, uh, emerging, he's not emerging. One of my favorite villains that I'm learning more about, uh, Blackheart. We read about him when when I made you guys read Ghost Rider before. He's got the giant eye. He's he's like the the electrical vampire. Uh, I think he's so rad. Uh, I love I love seeing Morbius because again in the '90s is the only time Morbius has been really great. <laughs> it's really nice. Uh, uh, Brandon, did you care for this one? I like the art. Um, truthfully, the, it was a little hard to follow. Um, but so the things that I that, that I wa- that I were able to um, uh, figure out, I really enjoyed. Like Johnny Blaze's shotgun, or um, what Ben talked about with Danny Ketch constantly dying inside of Ghost Rider. I thought those were pretty cool. But for them, but I I I, I liked it. I like this one fine. I do like the idea of Ghost Rider, like trapped in his state because he's trying to protect Danny. And so that means like, I'm just going to pen and stare everybody and toss him at this muzzle. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to can't, can't get himself under control at all. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end, uh, he's like, Oh, you finally got your shit on together. That's cool. That, 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 that's a teeny art. Uh, yeah. I, uh, uh, that's a good time. Why don't we move on now to Avengers curse of the man thing. Oh, I should have been doing credits for all these, but there's a lot of comments we're reading. Uh, hey, guys, Steve Orlando did an entire little mini arc with Man-Thing last year, probably in the lead up to this. Uh, 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 we're, it's the Avengers and the Man-Thing, X-Men and the Man-Thing, uh, Spider-Man. other people, Spider-Man and the Man-Thing. Uh, but I chose part one because my initial one I was going to pick, the X-Men one, was part seven. And that wouldn't have made sense at all. So I picked technically, part one. Technically, it would have had chapter seven because it's street part. Sorry, yeah, yeah. But it is like one of the penalties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, this is the the one comic of this run that I have not read before, uh, and I loved it. I, I'm i going to read the rest of this Man-Thing stuff because I think the villain's really cool. I started reading the second one. It's good. Yeah. Uh, the, the harrower as a villain's a great concept. The idea of using, like, fear as, like, the, as, like a weapon, and, like, ev- if you just, like, Carol Danvers, she, she, she becomes fearful and catches on fire, but she can take the heat. Oh, that's spicy. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely like one of the most. Mo- this is the most modern one. Um, I love the art. The art is sensational. So oh my good. god! Oh my god! Harrower rips out Man Thing like like uh, like a <laughs> Mortal Kombat villain. She yeah. rips out his spine, eyes intact. Love it. I I thought horror culture from X Men show up. Didn't expect that. Big fan of that. Well, I, I love actually. Sushi. When I was reading this, I was like, hold on. I thought horror horror culture was only in the X Men comics. I'm like, oh, I guess they're just all Marvel. Hey, everybody's everyone's a villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After a while, I was reading the Avengers comic, and after a while, all of a sudden, Blade had boy thing, which was a little a little man thing on his shoulder all the time, and I was like, "How the hell do you come from this? I never read this." Uh, there, now we know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you know a little tiny boy thing. That's funny. Um, yeah, I love this. I think this is very cool. I love the idea of like uh, when Steve gets pulled in by the the oh my god that was so good ted i thought that was i i'm excited to see where that goes i do want to read the rest of this i thought i took a picture i did yeah there's a moment where like all the abandoned captain americas that like he like he never forgot any of them even the most obscure ones which is a really cool like continuity thing uh then i forget one of them ends up helping him at the end i forget which one it is uh but that was that was really great i love that horticulture who are villains ted Ted oh is it ted Mm -hmm. oh sorry that is right all right yeah yeah. i got because ted ted himself is a failed captain america that's that's why yeah that it took me for a second to to connect that but yes uh, I I love it uh, I love that horticulture is uh, uh, related to our villain and at the end of their little bl- section she's like hey and if she does this and she threatens to buy them we'll kill her ourselves like she will they will take care of their own their own family if they go against nature because they're they might be villains but they're for the for the healing of the world there's a great page of art um, that I didn't save but I should have where. Um, the harrower is describing man thing's origin. And so you get like all the little nuggets of just recounting Ted's Ted's stuff on a single page. I thought was really good. Yeah. Um, his origin story, 
almost exactly like Swamp Things, almost to a T. Um, working on a super, uh, not a super soldier serum, but a, a oh, bio. T for Ted. T for Ted. T for Ted. T for Ted. Oh, a little mm. coffee though. Um, yeah, I just, I, uh, I thought this was a really great first issue. I will this week continue to read the rest of them because Marvel Unlimited is easy, baby. Right. Yep. Uh, um, Brian. So yep. Gail, I don't know how you stayed up. You, you go get some rest. Thank you so much. We will talk next week. Hey, again, the rewind is always there, my friend. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank yeah, you uh, so much. Good night. I yeah, I love. I'm such a big fan of Steve Orlando right now. Um, and like this, there's like now I have like six, seven comics I can read more that involve yes. Man Thing. So I'm just like, I'm so stoked. Yeah, I love the art. There are three. There are three issues that are like. 36, 38 pages. Okay, yeah, and yeah. they have the broken chapters inside the issue. Okay, yeah. So yeah. it's a Spider Man uh, one next, and, and then the X Men one after, and okay. that's the whole story. Okay, so okay, yeah. So like one and a half. Okay, cool. cool. I, I really it. like that. I really want to read the rest of that story because I think it's really cool, and I love that art. I yeah. love that art like nobody's. Uh, I believe it was Mate. Yep, yeah. Mateo Lolly, who also did some X Men work recently. Uh, let's now move on to Thunderbolts number one. This is my favorite uh, one. Uh, featuring the Thunderbolts. This was fun. This was cute. This is a real. I think this is more fun than good. Um, yeah, I read this when it first came out, which was nine years ago. So I was definitely younger. Um, but uh, just opening on Doctor Strange has gone rogue. We have to kill him, and he's in his underwear with a goofy face. Immediately, I'm on board. Uh, I think this is a pretty funny comic. I think uh, I really like Elektra and Deadpool together. I think I think they're a, a fun pair together. This was. I wanted to bring this up because. Everyone associates the Thunderbolts with Thunderbolt Ross because of this comic. This is the first time the Thunderbolt Ross has ever been associated with the Thunderbolts in their 25 years of history. Uh, and this is because of this. So I'm glad this comic exists and this run exists with all with the red team, the red squad. Uh, but Thunderbolt Ross mm -hmm. is not the Thunderbolts. I do, like, so cool. I do like the Elsa Bloodstone stuff we get in here. Oh, this is a whole, it's a heist. <clears throat> That's why I like this yeah. comic. It's a heist of different uh, like demonic entities. and, and shit. Really yeah, only yeah. with Elsa is it uh, truly a heist. Valkyrie is just kind of a, a hey, Flash, go sleep with her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and You're the, the, the and Punisher's pot. like, I got it. <laughs> oh, oh, the Punisher's great. He goes to, to Yodaheim and he's like, Punisher, you can't kill Frost Tracks. He's like, I'm the mother effing Punisher. I can kill who I want. Yeah. Oh, I, just, it's really fun. Um, I really like that the Doctor Strange villain, his motivation is to make everyone happy. Right. And the Punisher is what makes him happy is murder. Yeah. That is the that is for me probably like the, the best reveal for And he like, says he says a pun, right? Um, and then kills him. Ding dong, which is dead. Yeah, ding dong, which is dead. And then he smiles, and then he's like, mm. he smiles. Yeah. Um, yeah, this isn't, I wouldn't call this a particular great issue, but I think the art's really good. And I think it's a really fun time. The leader's in it, a little bit of leader yeah. action. There you go. This one was my call favorite. This a, I would call this a great comic. I thought this ruled. This is my favorite of the bunch. I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I think it's good. I definitely think it's good. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. side note: if there was a shield existed and there was a division called Wand, I totally applied to start working for Wand. I love that so much because Wand. other than because rather than than doing a heist, they end up in Wand and Wand and they're like. We're just going to tell you everything because we're going to wipe your mind anyway, but it's going to make you more confident when you actually do the thing. So whatever. That was, like that just was the, fun, yeah. Well, and just, that they were, they, they were like, we, we commissioned you to do this the entire time. Yeah. Uh, was part of the, the shtick. Oh, they look so good in their outfits too. <laughs> oh my God. The leader in his little Iron Man suit. Oh dude, I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't get enough of it. I, yeah, I, 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 I really, I really liked this book. This was a lot of fun. I like, I like how it's written. It's written with a very, with a very fun tone. Um, I really enjoy all the character interactions. The living uh, mummy, the living mummy and the Frankenstein monster. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, this is great. This is great. I'm glad you should, if you like this, then you should check this Thunderbolts run out. Cause it's the entire tone the entire way through. It's a, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, in our final issue of the night, it is Fantastic Four Road Trip by my best friend in the world, Christopher Cantwell. Thank you for retweeting my tweet. Thank you so much, Christopher. Uh, also by Felipe Andrade and Art. This is one of my favorite Fantastic Four comics ever made. I think this, I think this is not just a perfect encapsulation of who the characters are uh, and who they are with each other. You know, a perfect representation of, of the Reed, of the, the, the Richards family. Uh, my TV is about to turn off. <laughs> of the Richards family. It's also, without a doubt, the 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 most horrific Fantastic Four 
comic ever made. And I mean, in terms of, of, of graphic, like horrible things happening body to horror. them, body horror. This is the, one of the rawest Marvel comics I've ever read. Uh, the things that are happening in this comic, I can't believe they're let do this to children and to, into their faith has into the first family. Uh, like the uh, Ben is just ripping things off. He's like, I don't know if I feel good. Reed. Um, I think the art is sensational. I think the way he writes Reed, uh, and I love the way he writes Valeria losing her mind. I I think this is like a, like a perfect horror comic. Sue it. putting up with Reed's bullshit all the time. Yeah, again, that's a perfect. Everyone thinks that like Sue doesn't love Reed. No, she loves him. She knows who he is. She's just learned to accept it. She shouldn't, but she has. Like I know you're a scientist. I like you do your thing. I'll hang out with the kids as I always do. I am a little mad about it, but I know who you are. And that's that's perfect characterization. Uh, of course, Reed's gonna use use a vacation to go do actual experiments and villains know this. Like, I think it's just, it's a perfect plot. It's a perfect one shot. I love it. I love it. it was really I, good. Uh, it was. It reminded me of Animal Man by Jeff Lemire. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Horror, and a lot of the body horror. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, this was definitely one of those fantastic horror films that I was not expecting to see Ben Grimm rip pieces of himself off. Uh, Franklin is everywhere and Oh my God, he doesn't know where exactly he is all at once. Seeing um, Valeria's <laughs> progression, seeing Sue like just constantly her gore or like her losing her own body, it was. This yeah. is like the, this is the like I've never seen this happen in, in a Marvel comic to, to, to these characters before. This is the insanity happening. Or even so Johnny broke. when he's on fire and he's like, it hurts. It's like that shouldn't happen to Johnny. So just this whole thing is like, dang, this is scary. I, and of I, course I, it's. No, but and, and of course, it's just like it's all point to Reed because Reed couldn't get. He's like, "Oh shit, it's a trap! I screwed us all!" Uh, damn, 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 I, damn, I damn, damn. That reveal. He's like, "Wait, I know this material. This is from a. This is me. <laughs> yeah. God damn it! It's always me." Um, I uh, Franklin the the way they represent Franklin's powers because like he has the power to do whatever he wants whenever he wants. So like to represent it in the way they do is 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 brilliant. Like he's in the entire Grand Canyon, billions of versions of himself, right. and then they just disappear. Right. And and like Franklin, can you help this? He's like, Dad, I don't know if I'm here right now. Mm -hmm. That's haunting, dude. That is haunt. That's like horrifying because that's not body horror. That's like emotional <laughs> horror. Like I I love this comic so much. It's so. Uh, there's the line where Reed goes to Franklin and says, and it's like, Franklin, are you okay? He's like, Yeah, why? Because you're everywhere. You're in the entire house right now. You're in the entire house right now. Oh, man, yeah, uh, yeah. I just I love this comic so much. Really good. Yeah, I thought it was really well executed, both in art and, uh, like you said, doing doing what they did with the characters. It's a hard to tart, hard to get over the image of the thing ripping off pieces of himself. Yeah, and his yeah. poor wife Alicia there, she can't see any of this, uh, but she doesn't need to see it. It's all it's horrible. Okay, anything oh. else you guys want to add? Nope, I love comic books. These all were right. good. Yeah, 